here before, um, and I don't remember because I full blacked out from the stress. Uh, I had tried to use the recording of coming up here to come out to my father. I ended up sending him the video, even though I hadn't watched it, didn't remember any of it. And he said back, cool, smiley face. So he didn't watch it. <laughs> uh, so I got to figure out how to do that. But uh, I was very inspired to come up here in, to begin with months and months ago by Lyle, who tells Ow. real stories. And I work at a homeless shelter, which is the best job ever. I love it so much. I'm a social worker. It's, I work with people. It's great. But it does mean that people are wild. And so you get some fun stories. So I have two stories to share. Uh, one was during the start of the pandemic. A lot of hotels didn't have guests because no one was traveling. So the state did grants to get people, uh, homeless people, temporarily sheltered in hotels instead. So we were working out of a hotel uh, out in Bloomington, and I will never stay at a Holiday Inn or go to an Outback again because I just, <laughs> I can't handle it anymore. But there was, we would deliver meals to room, meals to the rooms of people who were physically impaired or otherwise wouldn't go get meals, like anxiety. I was delivering meals one day. I knock on this guy's door. He, he answers the door. Uh, I try to hand him a burger. He looks at me and he goes, you a man or a woman? And I get that all the time. I've got long hair, sometimes I wear it down. And so I go, I'm, I'm a guy? He goes, you got a girlfriend? I'm like, I have a boyfriend? He then goes, you gotta get a girlfriend. You got a big dick? And I go, I'm not talking about this with you. <laughs> this is inappropriate. And he goes, you need a girl with big, with big tits and a big ass with the motions. And I was like, I can't talk about this guy. And he goes, you gotta get a girlfriend. The problem is you need a lot of girlfriends. Because they'll lie to you and they'll cheat on you. And then he bursts into tears. And I was like, oh God, <laughs> I don't know what to do. And he starts talking about something that's happened in his life, but I can't understand because he's crying. And I'm, I've got to do other stuff. And he just keeps going. And it's, it's just... <sighs> that guy was extremely drunk also. Uh, I'm realizing one of the problems with my work stories is that social workers find them extremely funny, and it's hard to know if other people will. <laughs> uh, but I promise you, these are great if you're a social worker. Um, this guy also used to uh, do a lot of other shit. Uh, he once watched a like karate movie marathon, and then later would go up to random other uh, shelter guests and start doing like kung fu moves at them. <laughs> but they didn't know that he'd watched that, and we also didn't at the time. So people just thought he was trying to fight them, <laughs> and caused a lot of problems. And then we, once we figured out, we would go and we'd be like, hey, it's fine, he's just really excited, and he wants to know if you also like karate now. Um, but he's not saying any of that because he's just too excited. Uh, he ended up getting housed uh, a couple months after the incident where he asked if I had a big dick, uh, which was very great for him. Uh, the other story is uh, after we moved back to the shelters, uh, when the stay-at-home orders were lifted, there was this one guy, extremely drunk, in bed. Uh, me and my coworker were trying to get him a trash can or water or see if he just needed to go to the hospital. And he had been drinking these like little banana flavored shots, uh, and the, our our shelters are low barrier, so you can you can have alcohol, you can there you can't have alcohol, you can be drunk, you can be high and come in, but you can't have those things on the premises because it's in the basement of a church, and they just don't allow that. So the guy is just super drunk. Uh, we're trying to figure out if he needs something. He's starting to like yell at his girlfriend. We're like, this isn't cool, man. So he pulls out a little banana liquor shot from his pocket and opens it, and I'm like, my man, you can't have that in here. So we take it. Uh, he pulls out another one, and he starts to down it. So I just take it from him, and he goes, man, the ball's on this guy, and then reaches out to me. Um, and me and my coworker are like, oh, God. Uh, I, I move away, but he, he has, every time I saw him after that, uh, he mentioned, I'm so sorry that I tried to grab you. And I don't know how to keep telling him, like, it's fine, I'm over it, it's whatever. Um, but for a week after dumping out his shots, the uh, shelter kitchen did smell like banana. Uh, that stuff doesn't go away. So one of my coworkers was like, I think you should hold the grudge. That was nasty. The banana liquor, not the grabbing your junk. Um, which I just think is a fun distinction that my coworkers made. And that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs>